Well, hello everybody, and you join me back in the workshop here in Maidstone in Kent. And this afternoon I'm going to do something I haven't done for quite a while, and that is I'm going to do an unboxing. Um, I promised you that on my last upload, and my last video, so... Um, and uh, thank you very much everybody who commented on the last video. video. Uh, within the first day I'd had um, 63... Uh, um, views of that particular video, you know, the, getting to the end of the Garrard SP25 Mark III on the Philco slash Ford plinth. And I promised you that um, I'd be having doing another video and doing an unboxing. This is the only, the second unboxing I've actually ever done on my channel. So, um, and I, as I said last time, the um, I had a, I was told that this box had arrived. And this is going to be the, um, I think it's a BSR deck I've got here, um, that's going to go into the uh, portogram as an uh, upgrade to that. Um, and I had some discussions with the uh, chap who's selling this, uh, um, this particular, just a noise outside, this particular uh, record deck. It's, um, it doesn't come with... Um, uh, plinth at all it's just literally a slot in so um, you know and but it's come in this lovely box so what I'm going to do I'm going to move move you so that you're level with the box and then I can show you around okay so, so um, and that noise was um, I just realized what it was my neighbor with his uh, Subaru Impreza and uh, so he just uh, he parked next to me outside in the main uh, in the road in the small space I have out there and uh, just driven off with it, so it's why it sounds so uh, throaty. Anyway, right. So I'm going to use I'm going to use something that uh, a channel I used to watch, and that um, the chap there, Harry, used to say he was going to be using the steak knife of destiny. So I'm going to use the um, Stanley knife of destiny in opening this box. It's actually been really well uh, wrapped up. Let me just show you round. I'm sure you've seen loads of boxes before, but I just thought I'd show you that. So yeah, this guy's really has uh, wrapped this up very well. It's covered in cling film and this red tape, and it comes in what looks like a jack box. It's a, it's a Sealy jack box there. Uh, so I really express all that. So let's have a look. I'm just going to see if I can do this. I probably need to do this one two-handed actually. So what I do, I'll put you back on the stand, and then. I'll come back to you. We'll have a. I'll talk you through exactly what I'm doing as we're doing it, as it were. So let's have a look. So let me come here. Actually, probably don't need to do too much. He's used this duct tape or gorilla tape, I think it's sometimes called. And uh, quite exciting, isn't it? My uh, one of my uh, YouTubers, Chris Ashley, was telling me that he's actually just about to or had just refurbished a BSR deck. So, Chris, I hope that's going well for you. Uh, and uh, I've noticed that on YouTube, on the recommended channels, that because uh, I've obviously been talking about this one, uh, there's been loads of others on there of people doing similarly. Uh, Recordology, the guy I told you about in America who. Um, it's quite an interesting channel. He's done an update about uh, idler wheel turntables. So if you haven't already gone and checked out his channel, don't forget to do that. And also, if you're new to my channel uh, and you like what you see, then give it a good old like with a thumbs up. Good old thumbs up. And also um, subscribe, because the more subscribers I have, the more fun it is, the more people we get to view the channel, and the more interest there will be. Um, and uh, the other thing is that my video was quite long last time. Do you feel that's too long? Uh, and because uh, I did add on the flip side, which is like sort of bits that come extra, and I'll do another one of those when I finish opening this one. Because uh, I forgot to mention something last time, uh, which I might mention now actually. That is the the record by the Diamonds. Um, actually, is on vinyl. It's actually vinyl seventy eight. Um, which I thought was interesting, really, because though I've got a um, record by Glenn Miller um, on vinyl, and um, I forget the name of those records now, the ones they produce in the law to get around the copyright, and uh, you can't play those um, 
on a gramophone, uh, acoustic gramophone, I didn't realise that those were, they were producing vinyl until the 45 era came in. So it's interesting that. So, though I think there had been some experiments with vinyl uh, even back in the sort of late 30s. Right, so let's have a look. So, okay. So it looks to me, I, think, I hope you can still see all this. So here. There. Really well wrapped up. This guy has done a really good job. There we go. It's a nice box too. Hang on to this. Lots of bubble wrap. Let's see here. Let me just help take it off a bit. So we've got lots of bubble wrap look going on here. That's good isn't it? So look at this. This is really well done. I'm really impressed with this. I have to say I give them a cut and then again. Good old and it's look it even comes with its well this is Quite remarkable. Let me put, put you down again so that I can work one hand, two handed, one handed, two handed. There we go. And that's wow, that is some, something. And here is the deck, and we'll have a look at that in a second. Amazing packing. I mean, this is the mother of all packing, but it really is. Very, very good. Let me just show you. Look, some foam in the bottom there. That's amazing. I like these foam bits. And then plenty of bubble wrap again. It's amazing. Really impressed. Really impressed. Okay, so, okay. I'm just going to pause the video a second and then I'll come back to you when I've done some more tidying up here a bit, all right? So, okay, so this has even been um, wrapped up in, in cling film. Look at this, this is really good. I'm really impressed with this, really impressed. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out and then we'll have a closer look. Right, so I've opened it up. You could probably see, I'll give you a tour around in a minute. And I'm just um, just taking out, the, the guys even put uh, sp the spares, um, the spindle and the clips in a separate bag. That's really good, so here's the spindle which goes in the center here, that's brilliant. And then the two clips, which you need, of course, uh, for the um, underpiece to secure it. So, uh, there we go, that's really good. And he's even put a piece of, let me just show you this. I just think this guy, I think this chap needs a, a shout out. He's even put a piece of uh, one of those Velcro sticks round the arm there to give it a little extra support. I, I'm very, very impressed with this eBayer. I really am. And he's done an amazing job, and I'm really pleased about that. This chap needs to have a a real shout out to say, "Well done, thank you so much," because that is such a such an excellent way of packing up. I mean, I do this packing. I pack everything like this as if it's, you know, as if it's. A he said to me he was going to pack it up. Uh, as if it was going to be going to a in a baseball match, as he called it. There's the starless. There's the cartridge there, and I have actually got a um, a new starless of that. I've actually got the same cartridge. Funny enough, let me just find that because this one here came came out of that deck that I had. Um, the the uh, SP25. This is actually a Garrard. Uh, I haven't turned it on to find out what, but that's a spare one that will go with that. So I'll hang on to that. Um, so yeah, let's just have a look and see whether there's a number underneath. I can't see a number under here. So that's interesting. And it's obviously wired for mono, that's even better. That's good. Okay. Well, that's good news, that's great news actually. Okay, so I'll play around with that. The motor looks all right. Uh, let's 
Let's just see what happens when we do a manual. There we go. It's on a 16, that's why. Excellent. So if we put that on to... Um, so, and I like the way the little brush there, as it goes across there, it will brush over. So it's, yeah, so I think we're, we're obviously I'll test it out. We'll give it a test, so I'll wire it in and do that. So yes, so uh, yeah, I think that's that's all we're going to do today. And uh, I'll come back to you when there's more to, to say. See you soon. So welcome back guys. And uh, so what I've done with the Garrard, uh, I'm not sure about the number of this. I still can't find any numbering on this. It looks like a 501 underneath, but I might be wrong. Uh, I need to investigate that. But um, what I've done is I've put it into the Fulco Ford plinth and then put Mr. Uh, SP25 um, just on the side, so he's okay, he's quite safe. So, But luckily, all these Garrard decks come, they're all 10 by 11 and a half, so they all come with the same sizing, which is quite good. And uh, so he fits perfectly in the same slot. And so, yeah, so it's, it's all good news. And um, the mechanism is quite free, and what I will do is um, I'll wire him in, I'll put some wiring, do some wire, wire him up, and then we'll test him out and then um, as part of the project but looking good at the moment and I take my hat off to the guy I've never seen quite this this much detail go into packing this a, a, a piece of equipment out like this um, there's always been something that's not been quite right I take my hat off this guy here gonna get a gold star from me because this is really good particularly the fact that he put the clips and everything else in this packaging and even a piece of Velcro tie to make sure that the arm didn't move from the uh, from its resting point here, um, which is really good. So yeah, it's perfect condition this this deck, uh, um, and uh, it's a really nice um, piece of equipment as well. Really impressed. Uh, probably um, I would have thought this one's probably uh, the middle 70s, and uh, if not a little earlier, probably early 70s, middle 70s. I would say this machine. It reminds me very much of a Mac, uh, Mac, uh, is it um, Maxrovox machines that used to be sold in America. It has this sort of stylization, the stylizing of the the way the uh, arm is. Everything is steel. There's no. This is plastic. This is that shiny black sort of piano black plastic. But the little arm on here is actually, um, uh, you know, is actually made of steel as well. So it's really good. Really impressed with the Sonatone cartridge, which you can see there. I've got in, and also just to let you know, I bought um, a new stylus for it on eBay. I was surprised you could still get these actually. This is a brand new one, so here we go. And there's a flip over type, so you've got LP one side and uh, 78. This is from the stylus store, uh, and uh, yeah, so stylus stylusstore.co.uk. So I'll let you know how that sounds once we get that fitted but it's part of the project. But yeah, so really impressed, looks really nice. And as soon as I get this up and running, I will come back to you and uh, see you shortly. So welcome back and you join me this afternoon. Um, it's a couple of days later since the last video. Today's the uh, 4th of February and this rather uh, cool afternoon, uh, seven degrees out here, I've got my trusted little fire on today because it's really quite chilly as you can see i've put the garrard um i think it's the 501 there is a number underneath i'll check that this afternoon uh into this into the plinth that the uh tw sp25 mark three came from and because uh, i'm going to use this for when i do my testing of of various record decks and that so it's quite nice it looks right quite handsome in this don't you think i think it's really quite handsome um and um yeah so uh and what i've done is i've temporarily rigged up uh, a temporary um mains connection here i've actually also added a grounding because this plinth uh isn't grounded so i've grounded it um the other thing i've got to do is and i'll show in a second is ground the motor board uh the actual motor because it's separated with some bushes to obviously stop any rumble you get through the uh, and then the uh, anything from here. I've actually um, found a, a small uh, uh, spindle to put in here from and I've ordered one on eBay. These The SP25s uh, marked 3 and 4 these are from they actually fit he says trying to put it back in again 
there we go they fit um, and uh, and then I've got the the long spindle here which I'm going to clean up for the drop and keep that separated so yes um, yeah and then the arm here uh, as well um, so yeah so the other thing I've done is I bought uh, from the Starless um, uh, starlessstore.co.uk on eBay this Starless um, for the this this Sonotone cartridge and I fitted that this arm is amazing it lifts up which is really helpful and you can see I fitted that now so uh, this was this particular number is t 9 TA stroke 78 uh, so there we go I haven't tested that because I haven't wired in done a temporary job um, this is wired for mono so I will actually be using some cable which I've got somewhere here here we go piece of spare cable screened cable there so I'll use that and then I'll, I've ordered some plugs I think I said that last time so this afternoon I'm going to um, grease the uh, underside of the turntable um, the uh, velocity cog is is free but I'm going to take that off and clean it and then I'll be show you how I'm doing that and then I'm going to um, see how we're running it's running it is running okay and um, so when I've done that I'll run it for you and show you how it's operating so yeah I'll be back in a second so just before I do that um, you can see there where I've just doing this one-handed holding the camera with the other where I put a, a grounding there and as I say I need to ground the motor as well and there's the connections for the um, for the cartridge you can see there you can just about see there where there are can we just where that there and there were the tabs where the uh, cable came from t to go to the amplifier this uh, definitely would have gone into a radiogram I think this machine beautifully clean needs cleaning up underneath re-greasing has all the others but otherwise it's uh, it's fine and I'll, obviously I will um, uh, re-grease the motor as well the bearings on that anyway see you shortly right so um, I've taken the uh, velocity cog off this cog here I've taken that off now and um, also I've removed the bearings from the center piece here from where the spindle is they need clearing up they're quite gunky uh, I've removed all the old grease from inside here and also all the grease from here this little wheel here and the spindle here remember this is the one that was normally get seized up so that's come off there so I've just cleaned everything out so I'm using some um, uh, ex extreme bike cleaner uh, which uh, I've used I use on my car to remove the bird stuff and but it's quite it's environmentally friendly so uh, it's quite good it's quite a, a gentle thing rather than using anything like soap and water which you can use I mean you can use soap and water uh, I could tell that this turntable hasn't been touched since it was manufactured because there was a line here of dirt here where the turntable was sitting under here um, so um, that's that proves that one's quite good um, I'll then clean up the turntable itself. It's in very good condition, this one. Really nice. I have just noticed, actually, that the cartridge... I'm going to have to change that because the two little places... You can't really see this. The two little places that pick up the sound from the stylus itself... Let me get the one that... I, fortuitously, I've got a spare here that came with the other deck. And you can see there the little... The thing at the end here where the sound is connected that's not present on that one and so of course it, I, it therefore won't work i think it's snapped off they look quite look quite um they look to me to be quite fragile so but this back end comes off and then you slot in the other one from the wiring so i won't have to change the wiring at all so i'll do that at a later stage so I think what you'd find is there would be no sound coming through the amplifier because it wasn't picking anything up from the star. I've taken the starless, which is in here. I've taken this off, taken it out again. So on that bit, and I'm just cleaning the rest of it now. So um, it's got a rather nice good stay here um, as well. So we'll carry on, and then I'll come back to you at the next stage.
Right, so the uh, velocity cog, this one, that triggers the mechanism to reset the arm, is uh, now re-greased, cleaned and re-greased, and I've also done the same thing to the bearings the, uh, for the turntable over there. I've cleaned out the center piece here. There's a center piece here. There's two brass rings that you have to make sure are clean. I've then removed the idle wheel. This is really soft, this idle wheel. Um, and I'll be cleaning that the same way uh, and then re-greasing that. One thing you've got to watch for here is there's a very small C-clip and uh, if it pings off somewhere you will never get it back. I've had that happen. Uh, I was very lucky on a one occasion when it actually pinged onto the floor and I used my famous uh, Roger stick as I called it there's a history behind it. I happened to run it over the floor and it picked it up. I don't think I'd be so lucky a second time. Uh, that was some other, that was a while ago. Uh, but so I'm going to, then I'm going to also just re-grease the bearing here for the motor. I'm just cleaning this off at the moment. Clean the motor, this end of the bearing, just to make sure. It's very quite very quiet anyway, but I'm going to re-grease it before I do the underside of the bearing, which fits into the other end of this pole, single pole and uh, see how we get on. So that's where I am so far. Just going to clean this up. Uh, it's up here, so 40, 50 years of, not, of uh, old grease and that. It's not done very well actually. This wheel is really soft. It's really, really soft as you can see. Very light new. There's no problem here at all with that one. So I'm really pleased about that. So, so far, so good. Be back in a minute. So you join me now. I'm turned the, I've turned the deck completely up, up on its uh, on its head as it were this is the underside and what i've done is i've from this tab there just happened to be a tab here grounding tab i've now grounded this to the main chassis so um it's completely grounded um and so it's now earth and now the second the next job i'm going to do is i've released these two screws here this is the underside of the motor the garrod motor um, and i'm going to take these off and you'll then see there is a pivotal bearing in here with a little foam piece of felt um, which holds often holds some well can hold some grease but what I'm going to do I'm going to clean this pole up here and then I'm going to re-grease it and then put some light um, uh, penetrating oil on there just to make sure everything is working well and then re and then put it back together and then test the motor so join in a second. So I've now put those bolts back. Uh, just see, I'll do this one-handed uh, like that and you can just, let me just, uh, where are we? Yeah, you should be able to see that. I've plugged it back in again. There we go. The motor's running really smoothly. Can't hear a thing. And there, that stopped. Okay, so then on the other side, just so that you can see that. See, there's the idle wheel back in its place. There we go. That's running at 78, so it's better to have it at a fast speed. There we go. And then, just so that it is running, we'll put this back in again. And it will. Slight noise because I haven't re greased, but. Uh, the thing about this is it will there we go and then it's right so like that running from start there we are slightly slight noise there because I haven't re greased the center piece again and that's that so there we go there we are so far so good really pleased about that speak to you soon so welcome back and um, hopefully the camera is rolling as I've had a few problems uh, getting the camera to um, get itself going again. It seemed to think that the SIM card wasn't working. Good God knows. I think I can make a whole video on how my GoPro mucks up the, broad, the, the filming sometimes. <sighs> when were the days of Mr. Palisodic? Much easier to use. Anyway, that was before HD. So you're looking at the underside of the 516 and I've cleaned off uh, in the sink um, 
you probably I'll put some pictures of that uh, and also given it a really good clean on the motor ball which of course you can't see because it's turned the other way now what I've done is I've greased everything really well with some of this multi-purpose uh, grease here ideal for wheel bearings and universal joints and chassis components but also good for uh, for uh, Garrard record decks it seems as well because I've used it quite a bit. I'm going to also then use some of this GT85 which is a uh, penetrating and water dispeller oil which I use on my bikes actually which is really light it's a lightweight and I just give it a light spray afterwards just to make sure everything's really working well so I'm going to do that and then um, uh, the other thing is I've uh, I may have said in the last update video as part of this video is that I've added some extra uh, earthing straps but I think I mentioned that last time so because uh, it's about two days since uh, the last video uh, and also I oiled the end bearing as well and the first bearing so the motor is really working well so that's all doing okay so yes so I'll be back in a sec so there we are uh, you can just about see where there's like slight slight overspray there so I'll just give that a light light spraying all those areas that need that a bit and uh, that should be good and um, yeah that should so we'll turn this turn turntable over and then we'll do some bits on the other side hold hold fire so right with the turntable is the right way up now and the other thing um, I received through the post is this little um, short uh, spindle because so we know we've got the big one which is here which I've cleaned I need to give that some oil that fits in here like so and that allows the changer to be used, he says. There we go, like that. And then, of course, take that one out, and then you can slot in the short one, which is like that. So I don't have to borrow one from the other deck. It's brand new as well. It's really shiny. It's really nice. It looks brand new. So that's good news. So I'll keep that by. Uh, so I'm going to use some of this um, Auto Gleam. Uh, vinyl rubber care condition protects interior and exterior trim. I've used it on my cars. I've used it on other decks. So you spray this on and then you leave it on for a few minutes and then you can buff it off and it really brings everything up really shiny. So I'm going to do that. So um, is this open? No, it's off. Okay. So yeah, so I'll do that and then um, I'll show you how to do that in a second. So here we go. Do -da 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 -da. Basically, you just wipe it on. I'm sure you don't need me to show you this in great detail, but um, so I'll do that and then off camera and then um, I'll show what it looks like afterwards. So there we go. So that's uh, all polished. Uh, all the all the motor board is now polished and uh, that's all done. So the next bit is I'm going to um, polish with a bit of metal polish the steel work, the shiny steel work, these bits here and obviously i've got the turntable still to do so yeah so i'm going to wrap it up here guys and uh, you'll see me on part two of the um garrard uh 516 i think it is isn't it i've called it and uh, yeah and uh so um yeah so until next time and next time i'll talk to you a little bit about the history of this machine because um the guy who owned it before me I've been in chat chatting to him online through uh, eBay, congratulating him on the amazing boxing he, he did. And uh, so we've been having quite a nice conversation. So I'll update you about some of the history of this deck, hopefully next time. Anyway, until next time, don't forget to subscribe and push the little like button as well. If you really enjoyed what you've been seeing here, it really helps the channel. And also share with your friends, let everyone know that I'm doing this type of work and it will help the channel out as well. We've got over a thousand and twenty five uh, subscribers now. So it's really, really good. I, this year I'd like to try and push it to two thousand if I can. Uh, and uh, so, yeah. And uh, don't forget to keep safe and look after yourself. Observe social distancing and wear your mask. And uh, hopefully we'll all be safe and I'll be seeing you very soon on the next video. Take care for now. Bye for now, lads. Well, good morning, guys. It's uh, Monday, the I think it's the seventh day of or eighth, ninth, yes, of January, 
2021 and as you can see it's uh in Maidstone it's been snowing quite a bit and we have plenty of ice on the cars so today I'm going to start the boys up because it's quite snowy out here so what I'm going to do I'm going to use my famous um, sweeper that I bought a few years ago it's got nice bristles to get the snow off and then I'm going to but first of all I'm going to start them up start the engines up get them going so I've got a Passio here who's looking very 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 snowy cover looking beautiful at the same time uh, and I've got Grisho here my so we've got the 124 if you can't work that out and we've got the uh, a bath 595 and then in the corner we've got um, the Mondeo so yeah there we go so yes but it's looking really really quite wintry and in the park behind the house everyone's sledging because there's a nice slope down there so lots of kids are doing that so it's good fun but yes so there we go so yeah so the first thing I'm going to do is start the cars up but I'm going to push off some of this snow it's about two inches I suppose before we actually start then doing there so yeah so I'm going to do that and then I'll come back to you holds fire so here we go using my famous brush there and uh, yeah that's good it's minus five out here at the moment which is not that cold in my view but clearly it's quite good so Passio is took a bit of going a couple of turns of the engine but that's nothing unusual so yes in a minute so I'll come back to you open this door now and then we'll do a do a cold start on Grigio so little Abarth who's covered in snow here so as you can see the road is some workmen working on the houses but it's uh, quite quite winter winter land like so yes the park's doing well so let's go around here there we go the children enjoying themselves down there so yeah let's uh, let's just see if I can get the keys and I can then Oh, that's... Nope. Just bear with me a second. Here we go. There we go. Hey. And, uh... <laughs> right there. And I will come back once I do the starting up. Hang on a second. Right, so let's let's do a cold start. Let's see what happens. Ooh. Let's wait for it. Here we go. Fantastic. And we will always put the heated rear window on, front window on. Uh, Yep, it's all come on. So that's good news. So the frost protection's come on. That's quite good. You can see that we're quite here. So yeah, so I'll do a bit of snowing. Temperature is minus one, according to this. So yeah, okay. So join you in a minute. So you join me in Passio, my uh, Fiat 124. And uh, as you can see, um, so there's a dashboard there. And uh, yeah, but we show my a bath is defrosting nicely. It's nice and warm in here. I've got the door open, but it's quite nice. So um, yeah, so doing all right. There we go. So there we are. 
So that's me done, and I've just got to defrost the Mondeo, which I'll do shortly. But uh, yeah, see you soon. All right, we're in the in Grigio. He's actually come up to operating temperature now, so that's good news. And minus one, he says. So yeah, just about to see at the front windscreen. So that's good news. So yeah, okay, it's nice and warm in here actually. Uh, and uh, yeah, see you all soon. Take care.